All right, I'm Vic J. Um, this is Pickpocket James. James, what uh, what got you into pickpocketing? Um, where, where? Well, my my joke line is I got tricked into it. You got but, tricked. Yeah, but uh, honestly, I. I I did martial arts for a stupid amount of time, and then I injured my knee, and while I was bedridden, I decided to start doing magic tricks and stuff, and I got sort of, I really wanted to do picking pockets. It really caught my interest. Um, turns out, after a couple years of doing it, I found out my dad used to do it uh, in England. So apparently it's genetic. And is this something you've ever done illicitly? Have you ever? No, uh, um, okay. I, my moral compass is a little too strong. Good. Um, I, I always give stuff back. It's just, <laughs> um, I just do love the challenge of it, and I do enjoy seeing people's reactions to when I give their stuff back. So, and what does Rogue Village mean to you? I mean, what what is it you want everybody to know? Why do you do this? Why do you teach this? Well. Really, it's like martial arts. Everyone always thinks like, oh, now people are going to go out there and learn how to pick everyone's pockets. And they're like, that's not the case. What I'm trying to do is show you how it's done so you can prepare yourself to not have it happen to you. Try to mitigate damage, basically. Ethical pickpocketing, ethical hacking, right? All, all, all learning the defensive techniques here. So I look forward to earning my white hat. Yeah, are there any exclusive well, tips that you can uh, that you can show us? Well, uh, I will say this is that um, obviously we're not going to be running into these kind of jackets in Vegas too mm -hmm. often, okay? Um, but my best tip for you is when you have stuff that's going to go in pockets and everything, make sure it's the bare minimum because anything else that's in there uh, is going to be ops, basically objects to try and take. If, thing, if you have more things in the way to try and t make this more difficult, then I'm just not going to bother. Reaching in and taking something that's half out of a pocket makes my life easy, so it's going to be easy to do. So how would you rate my setup as far as defensive, as far as how easy um, if I... Obviously, this is around back, but... Yeah, so I was just going to mention that. Uh, you have zippers, which is nice. It's a small deterrent. Um, however... Your fanny pack or messenger bag, however you want to call it. It's a sling. There you go. <laughs> it's a sling. Listen, at his height and weight, he's allowed to call it a purse. <laughs> but even though there's zippers, this is off your person. So mm. when it's behind you, that's a big, that's a big red flag in my eyes because you're not going to feel it open. All right. Because it's off your person. The same goes for this lovely little thing here. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, popping that's going to be difficult, but. It's off your person, so if, I, if I've put the time into getting dealing with the quick release, I don't think you would notice too much. So it's, it's things to just be aware of. If, if I was in an elevator, I would make sure that's in front of me, is all I'm saying. So what life lessons can you draw from, from being a pickpocket? A life lesson, that's an interesting question. Mm. Um, I find that as much as we talk about being moving into this, oh, like, People don't like being touched. People don't like being having people in everyone's vicinity. Mm. I've found that that's not the case. You just don't want people you don't like in your vicinity. Uh -huh. So okay. if someone is charismatic and you don't know who they are, you know, wolf in sheep's clothing and all that. So we're at DEF CON 30. What do you have coming up for DEF CON 31? Uh, ooh, so for... If I'm able to make it back, um, a, a little bit of more of the same of getting people to understand how it works, but also trying to get sort of, uh, it's, it's sort of hush-hush at the moment of trying to have like a, a, a starter kit. So you have okay. all the tools you can take with you to practice, ah. whether it's at the hotel here or at home. So we'll see, see if we can get it done in time. This is Rogue's Village? Yes. So what do you consider the modern day gentlemanly rogue? Gentlemanly rogue. Um, well, it's as much as I would love to be able to wear a three piece suit and don a, a hat and monocle and all the rest of it. Um, I think I think just uh, they are nicer than they should be. Ah. They because social it, it is a social engineering touch to it yeah. because. You, you are only upset or angry when you don't have control of the situation. So when someone's really nice 
and you don't know who they are and all the rest of it, again, it boils down to if they're nice, what do they know? The velvet hammer. Mm. Yeah. Very interesting. Pickpocket James, you are on every social media with Pickpocket James. Yes. Pickpocket James. That's Thank you very much, it. sir. Thank you. It's been fantastic. Great information.